Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at Winelect, and today we're going to be looking at how to build container pipelines using GitHub Actions with Azure Kubernetes Services Deployment Center. So today we're looking at AKS Deployment Center. We've done a previous video where we looked at some of the automation features built into Azure Container Registry. Today we're gonna to be looking at Deployment Center, which allows you to do similar things within the context of AKS, but it does integrate with Azure Container Registry. And particularly today, we're gonna to be looking at GitHub Actions. So AKS Deployment Center is the ability to create pipelines right out of Azure Kubernetes Services so that you can get workloads onto Azure Kubernetes Services through a basically a wizard and once it's done it sets up all of the automation for you and then you can basically just check something into your github repo and then it will precipitate a chain of events that will end up putting that actual code in that application into your AKS environment. So the first thing that happens on this is that AKS, the, the action really will on GitHub will detect a change in the repo and that will trigger the action. So say a Docker file change, a code change, anything like that it will trigger it. So you have a Docker file as part of that GitHub repo and GitHub Actions will then take that Docker file and do a build on it inside of GitHub Actions. It's gonna create a container image from that. And then from that container image, it will take that container image and then push it to a container registry, which is Azure Container Registry in this instance. And once it's up on Container Registry, then what GitHub Actions will do is will do a run command essentially. What it's going to do is deploy a manifest that is also in that repo, that is a YAML file that will tell Azure Kubernetes Services what to do with the image as well as configure AKS to use that image as an application. So if it needs load balancing, it'll put a load balancer in front of it. If it needs ingress, it can do that kind of thing. So you have both the Docker file and the YAML file that are part of that GitHub repo. And we'll look at an example in a minute. And once that's done, it'll do a run command, which in this case is essentially kubectl apply or create, and then it's going to put that container into the container runtime, and then it's going to run that as a container, in this case on Azure Kubernetes Server. So I'm here on GitHub and I'm looking at the repository that I've got all of my files deployed into. And this repository has at least one thing that I need to make all this work, and that's a Docker file. And the Docker file is important because what this is gonna use is GitHub Actions, and GitHub Actions to make it work is gonna need a Docker file that it can read to do a build. And then uh, once that build out works for that image, it's going to push it to a container registry. So I minimally need a Docker file in my registry for this to work. I have a readme, and then this is a YAML file for a Kubernetes manifest that I'm gonna be using later on in this demo. But it's basically one we've seen already where we deploy a service to container registry, to Kubernetes, and then we deploy deployment using a single instance of a container here in this particular configuration. So that is the manifest file. The Docker file we've seen already in other demos where it basically just provisions a, a container to run a DOS game. And in this case, I'm using, DOS, I'm using Commander Keen, which I have as a part of this demo uh, as well. It's, it's inside of the repository right here. It's just the, the old uh, shareware uh, files that you can download off of uh, shareware sites. So I can install that on my DOS box and then play it. So this little demo is going to use this repository in GitHub, but I'm going to channel it by way of Azure Kubernetes Services. So let's go back to the resource group. I have here uh, in my resource group uh, two things that I need to mention that I already had deployed, and that's the container registry right here, Blaze K8s, and then my container services right here, uh, the Kubernetes service that is running as Kates and these two will be a part of my pipeline build here. So with that, I can come into my Kubernetes services and look at Deployment Center. Now, Deployment Center is uh, something that we also see in app services, 
App Services has Deployment Center for deploying things to App Services. Now this is going to set up deployments for Kubernetes services. So it's kind of a similar approach to doing a similar task, but in a different platform, in this case, Kubernetes. And so it's gonna look a lot like the App Service instance of Deployment Center that we're familiar with already. And we've done a video on that in the past when we looked at App Services. Now Deployment Center here allows me to deploy from any of these uh, various kinds of repositories. And we're gonna look at Azure DevOps in a future video, uh, but today I'm looking at GitHub Actions related to GitHub, and I'm gonna choose GitHub for this one, and then I'm going to click Next. Now, the next step is to authorize this. Now, I've done the authentication and authorization already behind the scenes when I was preparing for this demo, so it's pretty much just gonna flash the screen up. And since I'm already logged into both, I they're both already connected, the handshake's already there, and I can go about creating my container um, pipeline here. So here I'm gonna choose that DOS game uh, repository that I have as one of my many repositories here, if I can find it in this list, there it is. And, and then I can click Next. And it's going to detect a Docker file somewhere in the, the tree that is represented by that repository. And it really, this is the only one I have in that particular tree. And this is the one I'm gonna be using to build with, and I can look at it, what's in that Docker file. And it's the one that I'm going to deploy to my Kubernetes services, whatever container image this builds. And down here I can set the port and then the, the, the build context. So I'm gonna be using uh, port 80 and the build context is going to be the root. So I want it to copy the everything in the root of my repository into my build context for this image build. So that would be the everything, including the, the manifest file and that commander keen directory that has the install files in it. So let's click next. And now it's going to ask me for container registry here. I can create a new one or use an existing one. I only have one available on my subscriptions that I have uh, here. So I'm gonna use that one. And once I have that, I can click done and it's going to go ahead and start the provisioning of that, that particular pipeline on the GitHub repo and inside of Kubernetes. And we'll come back and look at this when it's finished. Now that this has been added to my deployment center here, I can go back and look at my deployments over inside of my GitHub actions connected to my GitHub repo. Now let's go look at the changes that made to the repository first. Now back over here in my repository, it created me a couple of folders. It created this workflows folder, which contains the, the manifest file for the GitHub Actions. So this is basically the script that Kubernetes put into my repository so that the GitHub Actions would flow from this. So it contains all the steps uh, for building my container, pushing it to my registry, and then deploying it to my particular environment. Now, I'm going to pull this registry and then edit some files and then push it back into my uh, repository as well, or I can just do it right in the browser if I so choose. In any case, I can trigger a build just by editing files inside of my registry here. So uh, to that end, uh, I can go and look at what this actually deployed already as well. And if I go in into my repository and look at my actions here, now this did uh, this workflow did work whenever I deployed it uh, and it built a container. I can drill down into this and look at the steps that it took based on that YAML file that is inside uh, of that workflow folder. And you can see here where it actually did a build image build. And this is going to be the output from the Docker build that it does. And you can scroll through that and you can see all the stuff that it did. Uh, you could do the exact same output if you were doing a Docker build in the command line here. And then you can look at what it did to deploy the uh, secrets to the uh, particular uh, Kubernetes cluster here for things like names, usernames and passwords. Um, and then you can do things like uh, deploy the manifest file, which is what we defined already. Uh, and when we looked at building out that manifest files that are automatically deployed for us. So let's go back and look at those manifest files that it actually creates. And this is something that it will actually create for you inside of the uh, deployment. It creates a service and deployment. These are gonna look a lot like what I have already. And this particular one has a uh, container port. It's got, it exposes a set of containers on 
uh, th this port here, and this is the image it's going to be using. So uh, what I want to do is uh, trigger this build again, but I'm going to do some code editing uh, before I do that in the, the browser. But before I do that, I'm going to look at what I have here. So if I do get namespaces, uh, I did pull this one up to show that it was there was nothing here already, and it created this, this namespace here. This is a new namespace that was created uh, for this deployment process, so I can actually do things against it. I can do kube uh, ctl uh, get pods and then do dash dash namespace and then pass that namespace in and it'll show me the pods that are running and it created two of those uh, pods based on the image that it created in that build pipeline so i have two in my deployments uh two uh, replicas in my deployments that if i went and looked at deployments you'd see uh, the kate's deployments here i have two of two ready and then if i can do similarly look at services to see what's going on uh, with services so uh, I can leave this here or I could I could clean it up if I wanted to as well. I'm going to leave it here uh, just for, um, for for viewing so that we can come back and look at it because I'm going to change some stuff up inside the repository and we will see it deploy some new resources uh, to this uh, given Kubernetes cluster once we do that. So let's go back over to my code repo here. I'm going to go over and change my uh, manifest file right down here that is this keen manifest file here. I'm gonna make sure that that uh, container uh, image matches the one that it built. So I'm gonna replace this with that. And then I'm going to save this um, update. That's fine for the comments and just to add uh, the changes to my keen.yaml file there. And then I'm gonna come back over here into my workflow and I'm gonna change up my workflow so I can customize this. Once it's been uh, built for the, depo the uh, defaults, uh, I can come down here and just simply change the manifest here to something like Keen, uh, just in the root there, instead of manifest that it created for me. So Keen.yaml, and that will change the, the name of the uh, given, um, the, the name of the given manifest that it's going to be using. So it's going to deploy a different set of services. And you can uh, change other things about this. Uh, you can change, you can create create new namespaces. You could edit this file. It's just a, a default file that it drops out there uh, where it's parameterized and everything's already set up to work. And then you can massage it more to your liking if you want to do uh, something different. Like, so maybe you don't want to use a namespace, you want to use it the default namespace or something like that. You're more than welcome to do that by editing this file here, uh, which I'm going to leave as is because I don't really need to. I'm just going to uh, leave it like this and not really change it uh, other than just use that keen.yaml file instead of the uh, defaults that it drops out there in that manifest folder. So I'm going to start the commit here and commit those changes. And what we should see now is some, some triggers that were triggered by uh, the build process. So I actually got two in the queue now. Uh, this one is the changes I made to my keen.yaml file with the new image name. And this is the one where I changed the deployment uh, pipeline itself. So this is going to actually do two new builds and redeploy those uh, containers to my Kubernetes cluster. And uh, we'll come back whenever this finishes. So it looks like all of our builds are done with our GitHub actions. So let's go ahead and drill down to this and just see what happened. Um, I can see here that I have my build and deploy that has already run. And I can see where it basically did everything like I, I expect it to. Let's make sure that there's no errors in my build process here. Make sure everything looks good. Uh, sometimes this build script doesn't exactly work 100% well and this one looks like it went fine so I'm gonna go with it so with that in mind I should be able to uh, go into my um, Kubernetes cluster and poke around in it to see if I have any more services so let's see if I got some pods running here and there's my new one my commander keen pod that I have running I just have one in my replica let's look at my services I should have uh, two services here so there's the original one that I had and here's the new one that I have. And then I should be able to run uh, deployments. 
and I should be able to see my keen deployment there. So I have my deployments, my pods, and my services, and I have here my IP address. So I was able to change some code that triggered a build. Uh, I pushed to my container registry, and then from my container registry, I was able to deploy from that using a Kubernetes manifest file. So let's go and pull this up inside of a browser to see if I have Commander Keen up and running inside of a browser. So there is the, the VNC and I have a super secure password one. And I'm gonna connect to this guy and um, we should see um, sub commands here. Um, C colon and if I do DIR, uh, I should be able to run the install here and um, uh, let's go ahead and run the install on Commander Keen. It's a little bit laggy because I think I have two other containers uh, running on this. Um, and once that's installed, I can run Keen 1. Um, Keen 1. Um, and this will then launch the, uh, the game inside the browser. I think this is this uh, VM is taxed though right now because I have a couple other containers running on it. So this is going to seem a little uh, choppy on terms of the animation. Uh, quality. If I was to go through and uh, cut, maybe shut down some of those other containers, it would be a little bit smoother animation because I've seen better animation in the past when I've uh, run this demo before. But uh, in any case, we do see that it is running with the game is not exactly playable in this state. But in any case, I can still use the DevOps pipelines to build and deploy uh, a container uh, to Azure Kubernetes services and using a YAML manifest file all from GitHub Actions hooked up to Azure Kubernetes services. So in future videos, we're gonna be looking at how to do the, pretty much the exact same thing using Azure DevOps. And uh, we've done a very similar uh, story looking at how you can use Azure Container Registry as a linchpin in that DevOps process as well. So this has been a pretty fun demo to do. So hope to see you on future episodes of Tech on Fire with Blaze. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.